Hello, I'm Robert Rubino, and I'm going to read three poems. The first one is, is a little whimsical. It's based on uh, friends of mine who don't quite understand why I'm writing poetry or how I can write poetry. And it's called Frequently Asked Question. Where do you get your ideas? From nightmares and daydreams and wet dreams, from fears and ambitions bold and modest, well-dressed and stark naked. Where do you get your ideas? From listening to poetry's rhythms and rhymes, from the chimes of some of the all-time vibrant vibraphonists, Hamp and Hutch and Bags and Cal Jader and Stefan Harris. Where do you get your ideas? From doomed and deceased prize fighters, from Sonny Liston who knocked out all the badasses before quitting on his stool and a year later fell like a wounded bear from a phantom punch. And from Floyd Patterson who got knocked down 21 times, but got up every time, almost every time. Where do you get your ideas? From extinct ballparks, from the ball polo grounds in Harlem, where polo was never played, where a 450 foot blast could be caught for an out, and a 260 foot fungo fly could land as a World Series game winning home run. Where do you get your ideas? From horror films, from Night of the Living Dead, an allegory about the past's insatiable hunger for the present, and from any of the various versions of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, in which your mother isn't your mother, or your lover isn't your lover, or, worst of all, you aren't you. This next one is um, based on a memory of mine from many, many years ago when I lived in San Francisco, and it is, has stayed with me all these years. It's called In the Key of Keystone. It was all that jazz. It was the city, San Francisco. It was the venue, Keystone Corner a former topless bar on Vallejo Street transformed into a world-class club, its interior intimate, its memory indelible, and all that jazz. It was in the wake of the murderous madness of Jim Jones and Dan White just months earlier. It was a 1979 night in early spring, time for renewal and hope and all that jazz. It was Rufus Reed on bass, it was George Cables on piano, it was Eddie Gladden on drums, it was the quartet's leader, the headliner, Dexter Gordon, AKA Long Tall Dex on the tenor sax, blowing hard bluesy bop and ballads and sinuous and sensuous as soft as Kizar Fog and all that jazz by the book, but also improvisational and always inspirational. And in the spa space between the music, Dex speaking to us, his audience, his fans, his loyal subjects, with playfulness from the bottom of his bottomless baritone voice and sparkling eyes as dusky blue as all those delicately expressive notes and all that jazz, long tall Dex, a sophisticated giant of a black man, regal in bearing, a kindly king in his musical kingdom, with gratitude and pride and joy, holding the instrument of his genius as if presenting a newborn savior or an almighty treasure for all, himself included, to marvel at, while absorbing adulation wave after warm wave of affection, healing applause revealing perhaps we discovered in his performance, in his earthy and ethereal craft and art, long lost love come home to our little keystone corner of the world. 
This uh, third piece is um, one of several I've written in uh, personal response to the pandemic. It's called Gamble Garden, Palo Alto, California, April 1st, 2020. Sinking sun sneaks glaring peak from far behind circus of cirrus and streets streaks of cerulean sky, backlighting two side-by-side -side tall trees of cheery cherry blossoms in full fragrant bloom as we pandemic conscious Palo Altans stroll in public through gorgeous Gamble Garden, keeping our sensibly safe social distance before returning to our private shelter in place shelters where we might place our sheltered social conscience under dimly lit enhanced self-interrogation with whys and wherefores, wondering who gets stuck with this sickness and who escapes unscathed. Thank you very much. This is called Hush Memory. No need to remember your father getting caught shoplifting when you were 13, which would have made him 40. No need to remember your own thieving years, beer and smokes at 17 while supermarket stock boy, company car at 18 while newspaper copy boy, cash at 19, cheating pals playing poker. No need to remember your indelicate delinquent days, no need at all. No need to remember playing with matches at age nine, burning woody, junky, trashy urban lot, watching winking flames and stone-faced firefighters do their jobs. No need to remember getting molested at 14 on the subway. No need to remember confused, conflicted feelings toward unpopular boy in your all boys Catholic high school. No need to remember failing to protect your brother from bullies. No need to remember flunking tryouts for school ball teams or your adolescent acne looking like moldy strawberry fields forever. No need to remember dead-eyed teen neighbor who teed off slapping you silly and years later, your mother telling you she saw a whole thing from kitchen window but stayed mum. No need to remember leaving one lover cold, snap, just like that. Another leaving you, pathetic you, boo-hoo you, blubbering, boiling tears. No need to excavate deep buried memories as if you're a miner laboring in dark, dank tunnels of your mind. No need to ask your memory to speak. You're no Nabokov writing celebrated, sophisticated memoir. Your memory requires no request, no urging. Your manic memory never stops digging, discovering. Hush memory. Your memory needs to hush. Your memory needs to shut the fuck up. By somebody else. Thank you. Man named Nathan Hyken, 1914 to 1968. After Steve Allen, 1921 to 2000. Where are you? There's a holdup in the Bronx. Where are you? Brooklyn's broken, out in fights. Where are you? There's a traffic jam in Harlem. But where are you? It's backed up to Jackson Heights. Hello, where the fuck are you? Scout troops short a child. Where are you? Where? Nikita Khrushchev is due at Idle Wild. Where in hell are you? Where are you? Where are you? Car 54, where are you? 
Thank you.